The Aeroflex SR3 is a super 16 millimeter motion picture camera. On the operator side of the SR3, we have the record run button, the phase switch, which operates the camera at about 1.2 frames per second for use while loading or threading the camera. The computer control display shows a readout of our frames per second as well as a footage counter. The switch between normal and PS allows me to switch between the pre-governed speed of 24 frames per second or a predetermined frames per second. The SR3 is capable of running from 5 to 75 frames per second. The mode button will allow me to toggle through my menu options. Here the camera is set for 75 frames per second. To reset the footage counter, I press the set button for three seconds. To change the frames per second in PS mode, I select PS mode, choose the select button, and toggle through the frame. Preset number one. When I choose to shoot at 36 frames per second, I change the switch from normal to PS. So now the camera will run at 36 frames per second. To do a magazine change, I have to open up the battery and remove my current magazine. magazine goes in. It's locked into place, but now I have to press the phase button. The phase button will allow the camera to roll at 1.2 frames per second as the pull-down claw engages and the registration pin is set into place. If I were to run the camera at 24 frames per second with a new magazine, I may tear perforations causing film damage. The inching knob will allow me to move the shutter out of the way and rotate the film slowly by hand. Just above that is the, the film plane. And the space that used to occupy an, a built-in light meter on previous SRs now has airy glow. Airy glow illuminates the frame guides in the viewfinder. This can be turned on or off with the selection. And the adjustment knob for the brightness in the viewfinder is set using this knob. You can tell that airy glow is on by the red glow seen through the lens, as well as in the viewfinder. Adjusting the diopter on the eyepiece is as easy as making this adjustment, focusing the frame lines on the ground glass to your eye. Like previous versions of the SR, the viewfinder, or viewing system, is fully orientable, meaning it can operate from the other side of the camera or even in a corner. The Aeroflex SR3 is a 24 volt camera system. On the back side is a on off switch to power down the whole entire system. The battery packs are not compatible with earlier 12 volt models SR1 and SR2. On the right side of the camera we have two ports for accessories including video assist and in this case a remote trigger hand grip. This is the port for the video assist module. The camera will run with or without the video assist module but I have to make sure that the body is capped to prevent any light leakage. To remove the magazine on the SR3, I have to move the longer handle out of the way by pressing this button, swinging it out of the way, pulling the battery module back, releasing the lock, pressing the button to disengage the lock, lift up to about a 45 degree angle, and pull away from the magazine. This will reveal the gate area inside the camera. To put a new mag on, bring it in at a 45 degree angle and down until it locks in place. Lock the handle. I want to make sure and have a battery attached at this point so I can press the phase button. And sometimes it doesn't click right away. If that's the case, realign the film. Reinsert the magazine. Insert the 
Inside the camera we have the gate area, the pull down claw, and registration pin. If I press the phase button, I can see how they move very slowly to activate the film. At 24 frames per second, their movement is blurred. The inching knob allows me to move manually. The Airflex SR3 has a PL or positive lock mount for mounting lenses. On this particular camera, we have an 11 to 110 Zeiss zoom lens. The SR3 is a Super 16 camera. It can be configured to shoot regular 16. To remove the PL mount lens, I simply have to push down on one of the ears on the left or right side, up on the, on the right side, while holding the lens. It's about a 1 8 to 1 quarter turn, and the lens comes straight out. The PL mount has a keyway here to, that should match up to my lens's PL mount. Inside the lens port, I see the mirrored shutter, I see that my red airy glow is on, and at the bottom, I see a slot for a hex screw. Now that is where I can engage the system to extend the shutter to manually create various shutter angles. This should only be done with the camera fully powered down and the battery removed. The shutter adjustment tool is stored in the back end of the body. Inserting the hex key into the slot, we push down, and while holding the shutter in place with the inching knob, there, and now we've pulled it out to nearly a 45 degree angle. There should be markings in regular intervals. There's 45. The same process in reverse. So if I need to bring it back to 180 degree shutter, while holding the inching knob, it parks the tool right up next to the shutter and simply retracts that back in. I want to make sure that's returned back to its normal position before turning the battery and uh, turning the camera back on. To mount the lens, we find the keyway. Positive lock, so simply by sliding the ring around, it tightens the lens, it keeps it secured. It's great for these heavyweight zoom lenses. There are times when it would be useful to have an extension eyepiece. Remove the eyepiece on here. Add the extension tube, be sure to not cross thread. And the eyepiece. Goes on the end of that. Now I can choose to have either greater or smaller magnification. I still have to adjust my diopter as I would in any other situation. Uh, and uh, certain tripods may be equipped with an eyepiece holder up here to have a rod to actually connect to that. This kit doesn't include that. Now when I'm using an extension eyepiece, I have to flip the image upside down by pressing this release button and rotating the image for correct orientation in the viewfinder. Next to this, I have uh, an adjustment to the viewing system to allow that uh, a little more friction uh, in, in the adjustment of the eyepiece itself, whether I'm in extension eyepiece or regular eyepiece. The video assist module screws into this port right here, which allows it access to the viewing system without taking away any light. We attach a power cable and connect it to one of the accessory ports on the side of the SR. On the side of the video tap are some controls for orientation, frames per second, black and white or color, automatic gain control. On the back side of the video tap, we have an accessory for 24 volt, uh, an accessory for 12 volt powering from an external source, and a video out BNC. On the top of the video tap are two adjustments, this one for focus, and for exposure. The SR3 magazine loads exactly the same as an SR2 or SR1 magazine, though you should only use the SR3 magazines with the SR3 
because it is Super 16, we want to ensure that the entire negative is safe from any scratching. So to open the magazine, flip up the twist knob and press the safety button. And a quarter turn up will unlock the magazine. Inside we have the core adapter, a direction of travel, and a uh, slot for our film to roll into. Uh, inside the magazine is a diagram of where the sprocket hole should be in relation to the chamber. This roller wheel is actually telling me how much film is remaining in the magazine. Loading the SR magazine on the feed side has to be done in complete darkness. So when working with a full roll of film, some loaders, now this is a dummy load of course, that has been flashed to light and used for loading practice before, so it's a little bit looser than it would be from the manufacturer. You can see with a full roll of film, it would be difficult to load the film into the slot with the full reel on there. It can be done, uh, but many loaders prefer to keep the film out of the camera chamber. So keeping the wind direction, <laughs> I'm going to try it this way, though I prefer the other way. The film is threaded into the throat. The sprockets, the sprocket holes will meet the teeth of the sprocketed roller inside the throat of the magazine and they'll be taken up using the gear advance knob. After this I need to place the film <coughs> in the magazine. So after removing the tape from the manufacturer, I place the film firmly on the core adapter and bring in the roller wheel to keep track of how much film is remaining. And what I do is I take and give the film a little bend as I feed it into that slot and using my right index finger. advance the film. Now it should move easily through that throat. If I'm pushing it with the gear, then I'm actually creating new sprocket holes and that's going to damage the film and I'm going to have to start over. So it should easily go th into the throat of the magazine. Now that I've placed this in, in place and make sure that there's no other film dangling out the bottom or top, I'm able to close the magazine. I want to close that gently so I don't break any tabs. <coughs> Give this a, a twist and a tug. So once I lift up on that, that ensures that indeed my door is actually closed and I'm ready to come out of the changing bag. Advancing gear. So this gear connects to the camera motor. The pressure plate of the magazine is spring-loaded on this SR3. Now you can see that the film is actually advancing out of the throat of the magazine. This can be done, this part of it can be done in the daylight. So I'm going to break off a piece of film there. On the bottom of the magazine is a hash mark and that's where I actually need to pull my film two. So if I pull the film straight across and down and pull it to that mark without any extra slack in there, that is the length of my loop. So the next part, this is the most difficult for first timers, I need to slide the film up the take up side using my index finger, sliding this up and it should advance the gear on its own. If I have enough tension on that, you see how it's moving just by me pushing the film. And then once it's engaged, I can help finish it off. The last part, load the take up side. So the SR is not capable of running in reverse. So if I need to back up and redo the length of my loop, I would actually have to tear off the film and pull it to the loop line or hash mark again. So I can't back up or rewind the film. It's not in the motor. It's not in the mechanism. So on the take up side, again, it shows me the loop path for me to go around. These particular cameras are equipped with a collapsible core, which makes for easy loading. And then I just have to push the film in until it starts to bend a little bit. Engage the collapsible core to expand it so that it is easy to slip off that when I'm done shooting. Um, and then I just hold this gear in place while I take up the slack. And the keeper roller there is going to keep that in play as the film goes around and around. I'm just going to give it a couple of rotations there. Same thing, make sure all everything is clear around the door and I'm ready to close that gently. Again, make sure that it's securely engaged. Give it a little tug and my magazine is almost ready. Before putting it on the camera, we need to take a look here at the front and uh, 
put my film into its keyway, into the slots there on the pressure plate. So now my film is ready to go. If I line up, I should have one, two, and it's starting to roll off, one, two, and starting to roll off. So this is a good looking loop ready to be loaded onto the camera. Now, if I'm not using it right away on the camera, I would put a dust cover on it. I don't have one handy here. Would put a dust cover on it and make sure it's ready to go. The last step in loading a magazine is to label the magazine. I need to know how much footage, what type of footage, when it was loaded, and what the production title is for me to know what's going on. And I don't put the actual camera roll number on until it goes on the camera. After shooting is completed, we'll uh, put in how much footage we actually shot and remove the label from the magazine. That goes on the can that goes to the lab. So in a complete darkness, in a changing bag or changing tent, I'm going to open the magazine and we see that we have our film exposed on the collapsible core. So now my job is to remove that as carefully as possible. First I need to move the roller out of the way so that won't tangle me up. Next I'm going to get my uh, find the end of the film as it's come through the magazine. There we go. <clears throat> and I'm going to take my index finger and hold that into place. Now with my right thumb, I release the collapsible core and I'm going to go in and scoop that film up. And I want to make sure that that inside part that was clipped into the collapsible core doesn't hang out and uh, try and stay with the magazine. So now that I have all this in my hand, carefully slide that into the bag as delicately as possible. I don't want to cause any damage to the film. And now I take a, an empty core and what I'm doing here is I'm just dropping it into place there. There should be plenty of room for it. I don't have to worry about threading it onto that. Um, this just allows uh, a little bit of protection for the transit, uh, in transit to the lab. Fold the bag over. Place it in the tin cover the tin and then <clears throat> I'm going to take a single stripe of black camera tape all the way around the edge to signify that this is exposed film and I could also write that on there process normal or exposed or anything but now that's all ready to go to the lab. 